Hi, this video is the first of a series about painting like a great artist. In this case, painting like a great expressionist artist. I will do a daring experiment. I will choose one famous expressionist painter and make a painting in his style. But first of all, we should talk about what is expressionism? What makes a, a painting an expressionist painting? And we will look at five qualities that most expressionist paintings have. In the next video after this one, uh, I will look at Ludwig Kirchner. He is one of the most famous expressionist painters of the 20th century. And here we see him in a woodcut looking at us quite intensely. You can see his intense, focused gaze at us while his hands are making a different woodcut. In the next movie, we will dive into Kirchner's process and we will start painting in his expressionist style. But first, let's get back to the question, what is expressionism? Here we see an expressionist landscape from the 70s, which was painted by the Dutch painter Janos de Vries, who was at the time actually in his 70s too. And Janos was said to travel all the way to Paris, especially to buy uh, oil colors in the most vibrant color qualities. It is in a sense quite realistic because the shape of the tree, you know, the perspective is uh, realistic, but the colors are enhanced. So look at the orange of the field, look at the many different colors in the sky. The sky is pink, the sky is white, the sky is blue, the sky is brown, orangey-like. This is not what we would see in a photograph. But it is how Janus experienced this landscape. It's beautiful. Janus de Vries was a member of a Dutch uh, painters group called De Ploeg, or in English, The Plough. They had their most creative period in the 1920s and the 1930s. That's almost a century ago now. And interestingly, they were strongly influenced by Ludwig Kirchner. So how did that happen? One of the Plough members, Jan Wiegers, was in the Swiss sanatorium in the 1920s, met Kirchner. Wiegers eventually brought Kirchner's style to the Netherlands. We actually have a great historical memento of their relationship, because here we see Kirchner as he is being painted by Jan Wiegers. They were actually painting each other simultaneously. So here we see Wiegers as he is being painted by Kirchner. So this series of videos is about one question and one question only, and that is how can I paint like one of my great expressionist heroes? A way, you might think, but isn't that exactly what expressionism is not about? Painting like somebody else? I'm not going to paint what they painted, I'm going to paint how they painted. I'm not copying their content, I am following their principles. But before we get into the characteristics of Expressionism, how did I become so focused with this style? How did I become an Expressionist? Uh, why am I not obsessed with like watercolors of flowers or hyper-realistic pictures of cars from the 50s? Well, I guess I've always been fascinating by what's going on inside of people and that's what expressionists want to express. One day I was in the City Museum in Rotterdam and I entered a room and I was totally struck by this painting here. This is a painting by Max Beckmann. And Max Beckmann was declared deranged by the Nazis uh, in uh, Germany uh, during the 40s of the last century. And he fled to Amsterdam. And he worked in Amsterdam all during the war. 
and this is one of the paintings he made. Uh, he was very grateful to these people you see here in the painting because they, being art dealers, took care of storing or even hiding many of his paintings, which was really precarious. Uh, once the Nazis had declared you as degenerate, um, you know, they could very easily confiscate your paintings and destroy them or sell them abroad or whatever. As soon as I saw this painting, I knew this is how I want to paint. This is my style. And I've never changed my mind about that. So let's have a look at the five characteristics of Expressionism. Uh, so first of all, there's the what question. What are we painting? Uh, what Expressionists have often said is that they are painting an undercurrent. So you see an image, you see where you are and whatever you look at, uh, but also at the same time, intuitively, you register something deeper, a deeper layer of your actual view. You look consciously and at the same time you register things unconsciously. I have a history as a psychologist and working with hypnosis a lot, so this also really appeals to me. And Ludwig Kirchner has said, a painter paints the appearance of things, not their objective correctness. So appearance, he means appearance to him. Uh, in fact, he creates a new appearance uh, in his painting. So that's number one, the undercurrent. You're not painting what you see, but you're painting what it means to you. The second aspect of Expressionist painting is that you are sensitive to the tensions in relationship or in the whole society. Art is a way to channel that tension and make it visible. Uh, here is one of my own paintings and it's called The Secret of Populist Politics. All over the world uh, I see in, uh, autocratic leaders uh, on the rise, not only in faraway countries in Asia or Africa, but also in our own Western democracies. And this painting is not an exact rendering of any autocratic leader, uh, but it shows the manipulations, the hidden goals, and the power hunger uh, that they have in general. So that was about the what. What do we paint? You've said there are undercurrents and tensions. Uh, and now to how do we paint that? As expressionists, I mean. So first of all, here we see another painting by Max Beckmann. Uh, after the Second World War, he went to the United States, and this is a painting of San Francisco. Skyscrapers look like they're dancing, the highway looks like it's a flowing river. And here's a painting by Otto Dix, another Expressionist painter, who was severely traumatized by the First World War in which he fought. Uh, and again, you see these really rough, uh, expressive lines. Uh, if you look at the mouth and the teeth and the brow, it all expresses uh, anguish uh, and anxiety. Very strong, crude, impulsive lines that also still sort of show the movement that they made while they were painting it. So for the fourth quality, of Expressionist painting. Let's have a look at this painting by Max Perstein. And here you can see that the colors are not realistic. The colors are very strong, often contrasting. Uh, this lady isn't really green, of course, but it expresses something of the contrast between her and her environment, and it's probably something that came straight out of uh, Perstein's unconscious mind, the impulse to make a green. Expressionist painters will often use strong, bright, contrasting colors to 
increase the impact of their paintings on the viewer, but also to express what comes up intuitively from their unconscious mind. So for the fifth and last quality of expressionism, let's have a look here at this uh, sketch by Ludwig Meidner. What it shows very well is his impression of this street is enhanced by warping the perspective. It feels almost as if these buildings are overpowering us. So that's another quality of expressionist work is that often the perspective is warped. People and objects lean towards or away from the image plane. So back to our experiment. These are the five qualities of Expressionism. Number one, expressing an undercurrent. So expressing things that you register unconsciously, intuitively, and putting those uh, on your canvas. Number two, sensing tensions and making those tensions visible. Number three, using strong lines, uh, impulsive, quick. Uh, number four, using bright colors, uh, contrasting colors, often unrealistic. And number five, using warped perspectives, uh, meaning that you will let people and objects lean out of uh, perspective, also to express something about their relationship to each other or to the viewer. So, I will let these five characteristics of expressionism simmer in the back of my mind uh, for a few days. Uh, I haven't touched a brush yet in this uh, series, but I do feel I did some good preparation. In the next video, I will be talking about the life and the, um, the style and the process of Ludwig Kirchner, one of my expressionist heroes, and we will see all of the expressionist principles in action, not only in his paintings, but in his whole life. And then I will start making a painting in Kirchner style. After Kirchner, we will probably move on to Max Beckmann, another great German expressionist. Uh, and I will then probably make a second painting, this time Beckmann style. And after that, I don't know what exactly, maybe a painting in the Cobra style of Karl Appel. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next movie. Uh, and normally I would say and we will paint some more but now I can say and we will talk some more about expressionist painting.